Oh, I just Mario? did a yeah. I just yeah. did a I did a Chris <laughs> Pratt. Oh, that was weird. What you just did, what you just said after that was weird. What? It's, Why is that weird? It's, it's correct, but yeah, I mean it's upsetting, which is the reason I said it. Um, yeah, but yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to TGS Games. Um, we this is our weekly uh, game dev stream where we develop our flagship game, Vault Peddlers. A game about community in the post-post collapse. Um, as per the title of this episode, uh, today we're actually not going to be talking a lot about game dev. Uh, we actually need to talk about kind of a scheduling fuck up that we made. Uh, in that we've got stuff coming up and it's coming up a lot faster than we thought. And that's going to affect what we have to kind of do for the next couple of weeks. Um... Corey, take it away. I always like to shoot for the moon, and that is what I did here. And the thing about being a very productive person and uh, and shooting for the moon is you often miss, uh, and that is the thing. Uh, he, the, the thing about success is failure comes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, so, that being said, um, the plan was to do a playtest for the next couple weeks, uh, for the next four weeks. Yeah. Um, and then revamp everything and have a alpha document ready for, um, ready for PAX Unplugged, which is December 2nd. Uh, here's the thing about that. Playtest, if we're doing it on stream, is going to last us four weeks three minimum um then we are going to so that's three or four weeks right so, there then yeah so just to, to just to contextualize that that would mean we would start the week of the 19th go one two three four probably five with like character creation and all that stuff which would land us on the week of november 16th would be our finale which means we'd have two weeks to get everything ready for play yeah. test uh not play test for an alpha document um, yeah. And then we'd go to PAX. And the issue here is we are doing everything DIY. Uh, so yep. I am doing a lot of stuff. Taylor's doing a lot of stuff. It, it, it's, it, we, we, it is unfeasible. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, so here's the thing. Like if we, if we were taking just the document that we have now and turning that into our alpha start rules, then like you could theoretically get that done in two weeks, but what Corey and I both know is that we are going to definitely have adjustments that we need to make following this next play test. And with those in mind, that's probably not something that we can feasibly change in time for the alpha doc. Um, so unfortunately what that means is that our play test is going to be pushed back probably until we're back from PAX in December. The good news and the thing that you can all look forward to is that when we are back from PAX, um, there is going to be little to nothing stopping us from being a playtest channel for a little while, like probably for the next couple of months after that. We're just going to be setting up various playtests um, yeah. to kind of explore that world, explore that, um, explore the game system that we've been making over the last couple of years. Um, that Fuck, that just hit like weird yeah it is <laughs> well i mean you, like... well you think about it, i think that we looked back and like we started around like january like we're coming up on that two-year mark and like mm -hmm. this is going to be like uh, when we hit two years roughly that's when we're going to be in full swing with play testing um which is pretty wild like i don't know I don't know what the normal uh, what the normal rate of progression is for an indie tabletop game. This seems slow. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I mean, maybe. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I got their own process. Yeah, I have no clue. Um, that being said, yeah. Um, one of the things we do. I mean, we do everything here. Is the thing. Yeah. I taught myself art. So that we could not, so we could have an artist on staff. Yep. Taylor is a professional tech writer, so hi. <laughs> so we got that covered. 
Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. And then like, there's also just the additional resources that we make. Like Corey does like art streams, which also take up valuable time. I do music mm-hmm. streams, which take up valuable time. And then, you know, we like to have a healthy work, passion, life balance. Uh, and we don't want to work on this like 70 hours a week. Cause that's a surefire way to turn something you love into something that makes you just absolutely miserable. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been putting down work right now and like, I would yeah. like to turn what we're doing because we got, again, if we, if we aren't crunching through a play test, that means we have these streams to work on getting yes. stuff together, which means me and Taylor get to do one of my favorite things. Hang which out. Which is, yeah, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, I think that for the people watching, for the community, yeah, this might be a bit more low key. Very much. Um, it is going to be me and Taylor kind of dicking around, bullshitting each other, but working on things um, parallel to each other, which is great because it means that we can use this time to still be getting things done. Yeah. Um. Which is cool, because, like, uh, I think how we're going to do it is, like, uh, we're going to be putting what either one of us is working on onto the center screen, uh, and then we'll be talking to each oh. other about the game. No, I've actually to- I've actually got plans for what the layout of this is going to look like. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm, I have it in my head that I think I'm going to make it so that you can actually see everything both of us are doing um, simultaneously. Which kind of just is going to give, which is going to give you all kind of more of an insight into just the absolute chaos explosion uh, that is our creative process. <laughs> um, but honestly, man, like I'm kind of excited about this just because, like, most of the time now we hang out. It's it's always like with intention. Like, yeah. there's always it's always got to be like a business talk about vault peddlers or I it's. Know. Or it's like we're meeting for, you know, our private tabletop game, which is like always fun, but it's like a very structured activity and there's not really a lot of like room for just having dumb conversation, which is one of the things I love the most about hanging out with you because (laughs) it's just, it's just fun. Um, and so, because yeah, I, idiots. yeah, exactly. Cause I enjoy, <laughs> because I enjoy tossing a single brain cell back and forth between me and you, um, for, for like an hour or so. Like, that's just really nice. Yep. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like I'm excited to, I mean, I've been doing a bunch of three modeling, uh, trying to get our mini ready. I think I'm probably, I don't know, quarter or third of the way done with the actual model. On that note, you should follow us on Twitter if you aren't already. Um, we've been posting little updates. Um, the the little three D modeled hand is like the latest thing that we've been like shipping around. Um, it's it's very cool. Like it's very exciting to see. Yeah, there he is. There's a little guy. Love yep, him. Yep, yep. Yeah, and like I don't know, it, it, it's cool to be like putting like a 3D visual aesthetic. Like it's, I'm actually finding that like working with 3D is a great way for me to like conceptualize like I don't know, like that lantern. That lantern feels very Vault Peddlers. It's like super baroque, but it's also like pointy and like yeah, it, it, it Mad Maxy still. Like I don't know. Yeah, that's that's we we should probably work on our pitch, which I actually kind of realized that when we went on. What did the words stream. was were the words electric baroque not enough? No, but when I said it's Mad Max meets the Renaissance, they were like, "All right, hell yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> which, like, now that we have like the vehicle aspect of our game, a hundred percent, right? Like that is what it is. Oh, it that's is a Mad thousand. Max meets- that's a yeah. thousand. It's it's nomad leathers and neck ruffles. It's yeah, yeah a thousand <laughs> thousand percent. It's a good t-shirt, by the way. It's a great t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, I, I I think that's like that's what it is. Like, we we call it, it's 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 Mad Max meets the Renaissance. Like, and we fucking go from mm. there. Um, so yeah, we we need to work on. Uh, obviously, we can button up our website a bit more. Um, yeah. I gotta fix like uh, some of the scale and text issues and 
Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to be starting to compound everything down into the graphic design aspect of things, which is fucking terrifying to show you all. Um, yeah, I mean that's you- that's gonna be that's gonna be a very fun bit. Is like you all get to see how the sausage is actually made, which is, as it turns out, not as glamorous as we've been letting you believe on this stream. <laughs> Because because we we start a stream and it's like here's the thing that I spent you know nine hours doing off stream <laughs> getting ready for you, um, and it doesn't happen uh, quite that easily in real life. Uh, no, I mean like I don't know what your process looks like for things, Taylor, but mine's a fucking disaster. Like, here's the thing. I like my career is like I'm a technology writer or whatever. And like for any writers, they're always like, oh, yeah, like, you know, like you do like your rough draft and then you've got your first draft and a second draft and then your final draft. And it's like, I like write one thing and I give it to you. (laughs) And that's pretty much it. Um. I'm a perfectionist with things and like. I need to, when I learned, this is why we do things the dumb way that we do them. Because when I say, hey, we can do this, I'm like, but we should learn how to do, like, do we, we should learn how to make bait in order to go fishing, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Um, you you wouldn't go fishing unless you constructed the rod yourself. Right, uh, like, because otherwise it's not really fishing. <laughs> no, not really, right? <laughs> And if you're going to do that, really, you should mine your own materials to make the rod. That's going to involve some level of, like, smelting and, like, mineral mineral composition. So got to figure that out. Tu- I want to be in tune with the process. <laughs> it's, 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 vertical, it's vertical integration. You're a real Andrew Carnegie, uh, just controlling every step of the manufacturing process. Ugh. I know. Uh, the effects that capitalism has on all of us. Um, I just want to do my dumb little projects. I mean, I love our dumb little projects. That's yeah. like, yeah, that's why I, that's why I do this. Um, I, have, I have developed a robust set of skills because of this game. Um, I have not. I, <laughs> I, I use the skills I already have. Um, some would say a smarter move. I would. <laughs> yeah. No, Me no, too. no offense. I'm in awe of what you do, but like, no, thank you. I am fine. I'm very happy with with what with my current skill set. Like, Taylor, you're a hundred percent a smarter person. <laughs> ba- better, uh, what of all trades? J- or what's the saying? Jack of all trades, master of none, but still better than mm-hmm. master of one. Like. You're good. Hey, I, I've never heard that second part. Um, Have you never heard that? Uh huh. Yeah, no, that's the that's the that's the whole phrase. It's it's actually meant to say it's better to be kind of good at a lot of things than to like have a Mast- total yeah mastery of like a singular thing because you're useless in everything else. What is mastery of everything that you do, or else or else you need to not do it anymore. Uh, well, then you'd be Elstragoon. Yeah, that's fucking fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes. So mad with how talented, well skilled he is. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. Yeah, no, watching his stream is infuriating. Why um, do you watch us? I don't know. I don't know why <laughs> he thought that we were worth his time. He saw a, a sick puppy on the side <laughs> of the road. <laughs> Oh, these poor guys. They're going to die if somebody doesn't take them in. They're a little guy. It's it's cold out there. It's an ego boost for him, Noggin, dude. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> He's not even a good person. He just he just wanted to feel better about himself. No, that's I not mean, true. Elstragoon is an yeah. angel. Is an angel sent to Earth. Um, I'm so excited for... Um, I'm so excited for... What's it called? Pax Unplugged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to meet people. I'm excited to meet the community and, like, hand out pieces of our game. Uh, So, like, let's talk about that. Um, Yeah. uh, Well, first off, I just had to order uh, the resin I'm going to be using for printing the minis. Woo! As well as a cure and wash station to make my life so much easier 
on the post uh, on the post printing aspect of things. Good lord. I didn't want to, but I was like, it's that or build this like fucking DIY fucking cure station that is just going to be a headache. Yeah, so. no, I mean that's there. I mean, don't you want to be in tune with the process, Corey? <laughs> I am going to be. It's just this is. A, but you didn't build is... the station, though. How do you know? How do you know how the station works? Fuck. <laughs> please, hey, Corey. Please, yeah. please don't, please don't build your own station. Go with the one you bought. Well, I mean, like, here's the thing: the station tailor it would just be like a big old, big old cart carton with mm -hmm. tin foil and the right UV light. Okay. That's it. But this way, I can have my wash station built right into it, which will be nice. Yeah, I mean, that sounds... I was going to say, I mean, it sounds like the pre-made one is going to be better. Mm -hmm. I now, have to deal with a lot of chemicals. No, I'm going through a similar thing where, um, for, for some strange reason, I'm looking at buying a new guitar. And, like, I keep looking at, like, the little DIY kits, and I'm like, oh, that looks like it'd be fun. Like, that looks like it'd be cool. And, like, I bet you get better parts for the, like, for the dollar than, like, just buying, like, a shitty Squire. I bet it would be good. <laughs> and, uh, it's I, not going to, yeah, it's not going to be good. I know it's not going to be good. I know in my gut it's not going to be good. And I know that because I'm going to be the one building it. <laughs> We've entered our, uh, our wooden ships and bottles phase. Oh, yeah. Uh, Noggin dude says <laughs> some processes involve credit cards. That's true. Very true. Uh, yeah. Most, a lot of them. Um, that being said, on the topic of credit cards, um, next things we are going to be ordering then is uh, we need to be, we're going to be stealing a lot of information from a lot of people. No, uh, we are going to be. Um, Send us your credit card numbers to Terry Moody Games. <laughs> Send us your identity, please. Yeah. Please. Only if it's uh, good, though. Yeah. For, no, for no, no shitty college kid identities, thank you. I don't need your identity. Unless you're a responsible college kid, you might have good credit. I'll take it. I'll take it. Like the business majors out there or something? Nah, just like my old boss's kid. He had like a credit card for the time he was like 16 on. His credit was like fucking 850 by the time he fucking oh got out God. of high school. Get, know, the, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I know. I'm, you, like I'm, no 30, I'm 33 and I have like a little baby credit card. <laughs> um, no, what I was going to say is yeah. we need to, um, we have the... Sticker designed. We have the uh, business card designed. So I think okay. we need to fire off on the order for those. Okay, uh, cool. So that'll be cool. I think we're just going to do the circle sticker for the sticker, which will be like 75 bucks uh, for like three or 400 of them, which will be cool. Um, and we will have the business card. And then we're going to have the mini and all stapled together, which we're going to hand it to people like we are drug dealers out in a fish parking lot. Um, I'll trade you a grilled cheese for your T-shirt. <laughs> I feel like by Saturday night, I'm going to be at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I Is it weird that I'm actually kind of excited for that aspect of it? Like... We've talked about this. Yeah, it's it's us, right? Like, it's our process. It's, it's who we were before, like, as kids. Well, that's the thing is, like, I'm not even, like, I'm not even a social person anymore. Like, I'm going to be so drained by, like, Friday evening. I'm going to be so done. But for some reason, like, that aspect, I, it's just something I haven't done in a really long time. And I'm looking forward to doing that again. Check out my band camp. Check yeah, exactly. Bank. Right. Like here's a, here's a demo. Here's my yeah. CD. Yeah. We're kind of like, <laughs> here's my CD with no album art in a slimline case. <laughs> and like, Ugh. yeah, exactly. Or Don't like one of those little cardboard. Song, the first song sucks. 
Skip um, the first song. Yeah, skip the first song, but the rest of them are pretty good. Yeah, it's like if you had a if you had a like live stream or something, and you had to tell people to skip the first thirty minutes of it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keeping keeping the tradition alive. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that was heartbreaking. Uh, awful. Um. But yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, so yeah, we can absolutely fire off on those. That's no problem. Obviously, let me know off stream when you do, and I'll send you a little bit of money to pay for my half of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so <laughs> with that under control, I guess let's, let's, I mean, we have time to go over some stuff. Let's go over some stuff we didn't go over last time. Yeah, totally. Okay. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. Um, so let's see here. Um, what did we go over last time? That is actually a good question. Um, let's look at our to-do list. So the only thing we have left actually are just to make NPC templates and to create the cheat sheet uh, okay. for players. So actually crazy enough, that is done. Um, which well, means let's, uh, um, let's I actually just need to delete some stuff. Sorry, go ahead. Let's pull up um, a picture of the uh, NPC card. Yeah. Hang on for me one Which sec. I dropped into a backpack and handed to a man. Yeah. So this is our, uh, generally, this is our NPC template. Um Sorry if the picture is getting a little bit cut off there, but uh, this is generally what we're looking at. So name and tier, look, motivation, wounds, uh, abilities, and goods. Uh, what are the abilities? Uh, so, like, if you wanted to give your NPC, like a boss, some weird ability, you would write it down there. Uh, just oh, like okay, so it's just... <laughs> Yeah, like the same as an item, basically. Just okay. like, hey, they, yeah, they can do this. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So yeah. let's take a peek at... I'm going to take a peek at something that we do here more and more, and I let people in on it, is use uh, both of our fairly massive collection of RPGs. <laughs> Yeah. Between the two of us, I don't even know how many we have. Hundreds. You, 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 your collection dwarfs mine. Like most of my stuff is in PDF form. I have, I have a yeah. lot of PDFs, but like as far as physical books, I've got maybe a dozen. Yeah, I mean that's pretty good. I probably have like. You've got one... like seventy books, though. No, I don't. I, I was keeping track. I think I have like close to forty. Is it really well, only forty? I... Well, I'm, that's not counting, like, um, that's only counting core, like, I think close to 40 with, like, just core rules. Okay. Uh, not Damn. counting, like, yeah. Not counting, not counting extensions or whatever, or, like, supplements. <laughs> well, actually, if that's the case, uh, I think, actually, if that's the case, I've only got maybe four or five core rule books. I think. Maybe, maybe it's less than that. I don't know. Either way. Yeah, um, I, either way, um, yeah. but yeah, no, we're, of course, right? Like the, what the saying, I think I've said this a couple of times on stream is like a thief steals from one person, a scholar steals from 10 and a great st scholar steals from 50. So like, yep. yeah, no, thousand percent. So I'm going to go find my friend, Mr. Mike Pondsmith's book. And... <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, normally I wouldn't suggest this because though I love Mike Pondsmith, the Cyberpunk Red book is sort of a nightmare. Oh yeah, no. It's a it's a phenomenal game and one of the worst books I've ever ever read in my life. Uh in the late it, it, it looks nice. It's easy to read. It's just that like Everything is named in in universe, right? Yeah, and that's the least helpful thing in the world. Um, no, like the sections themselves are actually great. Once I once I find the section I'm looking for, um, it's it's perfect. Um, like it's exactly what I want. 
Uh, but on top of that, because uh, I have mine in PDF form, and like the the text on that isn't even crawlable. Like it's not even something you can control F to like find something you're looking for. Um, you like you literally just have to know what page it's on, and that's oh, insane. Name. Is it really? Yeah. Oh damn, no. Mine is. I, I don't know. Like mine is. Uh, it's just like a blank page or whatever. Or as far as like text is concerned, it's a blank page. You must have gotten a flattened one somehow. Yeah. Um, but no, that's that's the thing that actually makes it the hardest to deal with. Um, but yeah, the sections themselves are good. Like, I, I actually think that it's a, it's a well-designed book other than the shitty table of contents. Mooks and grunts. Uh, so I just wanted to look at how they lay out, which I should be familiar with because I have brought them all into Roll20, <laughs> physically. Yeah, right. Uh, which is frustrating, but it is really useful. I should say that, like, um, if you are playing on a VTT and you don't have, like, um, it, it, you don't have, like, a built... That's cool. Hi, dogs. My partner uh, just got home. <laughs> you don't have, like, a built-out, like, um... Uh, Ooh. like boundary page or you don't have like uh the uh, what, what do they call it the compendium in roll 20 uh, a really helpful thing to do is like take all of the suggested ones in the book and port them over on character sheets and don't associate them with anything just have them all all in there that way you can just like duplicate and modify as you need for the game or like in the case of like cyberpunk red our game like it's a city. There's a lot of fucking people. I just pick at random. Like, I pick who makes the most sense out of these mooks and grunts and, like, roll for people to roll against. It, it works really well for me. Uh, it is frustrating that they have, after that, made a Roll20 document. <laughs> like, did but, you but, did you confirm that if you're a player, you have to pay for it to get it? I have not even looked it up. Oh, my God. Yeah. I If that's the case, it's going to be... I'm, I'm going to be a little bit shocked actually. Um, yeah, no. Um, so L5R, L5R actually does this really well um, because, because their system is actually pretty similar to the one that we have now, at least as far as like approaches and skills. Um, mm. What they have at the end of their book is kind of a similar thing. It's like they have a bunch of stat blocks created for like humans uh, then they have like a couple that are like uh, monsters from the Shadowlands. Then they've got like a few for like just regular, like ordinary animals and wildlife. Um, and like looking at those templates gives you like a really good spread of this is the kind of character I'm looking for. So I'm going to pull this template and then just kind of make adjustments to that stat block, you know, yeah. from there. Um which we want to replicate with our book because we think that it's a really satisfying way to do it. So looking at our character sheet uh, or, or NPC thing, I, I think the best way to do it is probably have like um, tiers of enemies maybe associated with it. So like Cyberpunk has things broken down where it's like Reclaimer Chief, Netrunner, Security Operative, and then they have it broken down into like, these are disposable baddies. Uh, these are like mid-level guys. These are big bad boys. Yeah. Um, we should probably do something like that. We have an internal tiering system, which will make that easier. Um, as far as like layout in the book would go, I think because we have like t tier one is our low tier, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. Let me... Okay. Quick, ba, 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 ba. Uh, yes, one star is a it, it, one star. We're doing star, not tier. Uh, one star is low level. Three star is uh, BBEG. Okay. Um, well, I wrote tier in the NBC card. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um. So I guess I will have to modify that. Fucking a. <laughs> Motherfucker. I mean, I it's gonna... easier. It's easier to modify it in the book. We can do that if you want. Um, do you want to just do tier one? No. Yeah, yeah let's go back to it. I, I just want to look at it again. Um, okay. So I think for layout sake, what I will do is 
present these with like so the tier one is they take one hit and they're dead um yeah tier two is they have like one full wound then they're dead and then tier three is they're just they're just like you baby um yeah so i would i'm gonna gray out like a tier one will have that first wound box gray Tier two will have those first three wound boxes gray, and then the tier three will have all of those boxes gray. Um, yeah. So, do we want to change that? By the way, now I mean, I actually probably not. We want it to be quick and snappy. Let's stick with what we have. So, like, um, here's here's a question as far as the way you're going to structure that. When you say like tier one is going to have the first box grayed out, I mean that would literally just be. You only want to have that one box at the end of death available to check, right? Uh, yeah, you, yeah, we can do it that way for sure. Yeah, okay, that, yeah. that would make the most sense. Okay, uh, cool. It would be that box. I mean, you can't see me clicking it, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yes, that box and then the bottom three for... Um, for and, a tier, and we for should, a, yeah, two, and we should two, include two. a section being like, hey, feel oh. free to modify these. Uh, Amelia Cooper GFX, thank you so much for the follow. We appreciate it. Um, oh, thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Uh, this is actually a good point for me to just say, uh, if you're new here, like Amelia is, um, hi, we're TGS Games. Uh, we make uh, tabletop RPGs. Right now we're in the middle of a revamp of um, Vault Peddlers. This is our game about uh, community in the post-post collapse. It's, uh, it's Mad Max meets the Renaissance. Which is Corey's description that I fucking love. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, we've been making this game for like two years on Twitch. We're getting very, very close to the release of our alpha version, uh, which is going to have some of these beautiful graphics, like the one that you are looking at uh, here on stream. This is our NPC cards. Um but uh, yeah, we've made this for the last two years. Um, all of it has been live dev on Twitch. Um, and yeah, one of the things that we love uh, about that is that we get to talk to cool people like Amelia, um, or like our friend Elstragoon, who we met on stream, uh, and who's actually been on one of our play tests. Uh, so yeah, if you are interested in, uh, hanging out, drop us a line, Amelia. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, we're doing very well. How are you? Um, I don't know. And then, <laughs> and then we wait. I was just And then, and then we you wait, wait right? <laughs> All, all eyes on me. It's fucking crazy. Yes. <laughs> you know, we just peer at the camera. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, right now we're getting a, like a playtest document together, um, which we need to have ready in five, 50 days. I almost said five months, which would be a dream. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's let's do that. Um, that means we need to take a peek at our our character creation. I think that a general yeah. first tier character should probably have like stats equal to a player character, right? Like a, a tier one individual should have stats that are equal to a starting character or somewhat below. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So um, let's take a peek at what the upgrades bring like after character creation let's make a character yeah that was actually what i was gonna say is let's go ahead and let's make a character right, uh, cool. okay cool so i'm trying to think of the best way to do this where people can actually see what's going on here oh can you do like a side-by-side -side view of um uh, of the character questions and the character sheet and then you'll just have to write it down side by side somewhere view. else um i think i can give me a minute folks uh cory talk to talk to people okay uh, so <laughs> i've been doing a lot of 3d modeling for the game which i would love to talk about right now um i down i bought um a year subscription to zbrush recently which um I didn't want to do, but also I did want to do very badly. So <laughs> it was an excuse to pay three hundred and fifty dollars for a program. Um, that being said, uh, it runs on Magic. Have I mentioned this, Taylor? I mentioned this. ZBrush is actually powered by Magic. Um, so I've been like 
3D printing because we're going to have minis. And I did a test design of one of our species' hands um, just to see if it would work. Obviously, it's going to be much smaller than this because uh, standard uh, minis are, I think, like 30 millimeters, 28 millimeters, something like that. I think d and is 32, but I think they run a little large. Um, which I have uh, a Elegoo Saturn. It's like 4K resolution, so we'll get plenty of detail. And the build plate is like 7 by 8 with a 9-inch Z-axis, which doesn't matter to us because we won't be building them incredibly tall because, again, they'll be about 1.2 inches tops. Um, so uh, I, I, I can print about... 40 a go, I think, is what I had it worked out to. I'll probably do less, uh, just because it will be easier to get them off the build plate. Um, but that that is, like, what I've been doing. Uh, that that and doing, like, the layout stuff that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, that's That's been kind of my bag. Uh, graphic design, art, and 3D modeling, which, I'm actually, I love all those things, so... I, if I complain, it's I like to complain. <laughs> well, and he's phenomenal at it. Um, like, he, I don't know, the amount of work that you have done on this game in the last, like, uh, couple of weeks especially has just been, I don't know, it's been breakneck. Yeah, we've been going hard. The, the both of us, honestly, have been going very hard. Um, yeah. I'm tired of most days. I've been doing Inktober, too. Um <sighs> Yeah, which I'm 12 days into, which is cool. I didn't like mine today, but I drew an eagle with Frank and with, uh, like an, uh, what's his face? Um, who's Frank? You know, who the famous Frankenstein, you know him. He, he's my friend and yours. Um, it's not fucking Bella Lagos. <laughs> that is a Dracula. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, famous Frankenstein, so I gotta Google it really quick. Uh, are are you talking? Oh fuck, what's his name from Young yeah, Frankenstein? Dude, famous Frankenstein's. Hold on, <laughs> this is the coolest thing I've ever googled. <laughs> <laughs> name, name me your favorite Frankenstein's. <laughs> Uh, put your favorite put your favorite Frankensteins in the chat. Uh my fr my, fa my Frankenstein could beat up your Frankenstein. <laughs> Jesus God in what? heaven. What's his fucking name? Why am I blanking? <laughs> uh, okay. The most famous <laughs> Boris Karloff! Jesus Christ! <laughs> my god. Yes. Um, uh so I put uh <laughs> Boris Karloff's head. As Noggin Frank dude nailed it. Frankenberry, I think, is the one that you're actually referring good to. Answer, good answer. Yeah. Um, I put his head on an eagle and then tagged it because the uh, prompt was eagle. And then I titled it Where Eagles Dare. So I could tell people I was super into the Misfits right then. <laughs> Just like... I mean, broadly true, but... Oh my god okay um so we are actually ready um i okay. managed to i managed to get the stream to where you can see both the character sheet and the uh uh and the questions so yeah let's let's do this man um i can't i unfortunately can't write on this so i do need you to take notes and we'll we'll need to figure it out from there nightmare this is a nightmare yeah uh, man sorry <laughs> uh, it's fine i'll just do um one one e doc or should i um just character sure yep. yeah uh okay cool uh so we have our approaches which our game is very modular the point of approaches are that they are um uh, all, all connectable to different skills, so it's like how you do a skill rather than um, them being like a through line like a Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or something. Right. You don't you uh, don't just roll like Arcana. Uh, instead, you would roll like how you're trying to understand like the item in front of you, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're taking a really logical approach to it, then like clockwork 
Uh, if you're trying to understand like the mechanism of how it works, that's a clockwork approach. Uh, and then it would probably be like the appraisal skill. Um, yeah. And what those two things do is selecting your approach tells you what kind of die you're going to roll. Um, it's anywhere from a D12 is what you start at to a D4 uh, when you're at a higher level. And then the skill uh, refers to how many die you are going to roll. So your appraisal skill would be anywhere from a one to a five starting out. Uh, and that would mean you roll like you know, one to five D 12s or D 10s or whatever. And then you take the successes from that roll. Um, but yeah, successes so are generally ones and twos, uh, but there's also easier rolls are just anything that's over half. Uh, yeah. Counts as well, under half. Under, yeah. Under, sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. So let's start with section one. So we're adding the base stats. Um, all of your approaches begin as a D 12. So that is um, all of, yeah. yeah, all of these guys here. Um, Just transcribing. Skull. Skullduggery is our favorite, by the way. It's because it's the best name. TRV. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so everything's going to start at a D12, and all the approaches are going to start at a 1. Uh, it's the opposite. D12s are the approaches. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. skills the uh, are over on the other side, and those, or sorry, skills are down here, uh, and those are all going to start at one. So basically, it's a die pool system, is the idea. Uh, correct, yes. All right, cool. Uh, that is all done. What is our next step, Taylor? Um, every beginner wallet, uh, which is dead center of the sheet, uh, right yep. about here, uh, has five petty coin. Uh, now five, uh, petty coin is, uh, both an in-game and meta currency that we, uh, have in this game. You, you can use it to, um, perform superhuman feats. Uh, you can use it to, um, buy rations and provisions for your caravan, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Um, and you can use it, um, to, uh, well, you can use it for a lot of things. You can use it to get port in certain cities. Uh, you can use it to uh, fuel your caravan for a day's worth of travel. Uh, you can use it to repair like broken engines. The these are things that meld with the existing machinery of this world. Um, they are also very dangerous uh, when compiled together. Um, these calamities, um, I think as we have uh, come to call them, these have like wrecked the landscape of Eva because too many of these things compiled together and the energy created this massive dangerous thing. Um, and so as a result, you can only have so many of them at a time. Um, most vault peddlers start with a basic wallet and that means you can only have five petty coin. Um, as you improve in the game, you can carry more, um, but five right now is your max. Cash kills everything around me. Yeah, cash kills everything around me, exactly. <laughs> Key. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to have you select a species. Now, okay, cool. the world of Eva has uh, numerous different species um, that are the result of uh, alien life and star shatter energy coming to this planet in the wake of this environmental uh, disaster. So uh, in the wake of that disaster, lots of things became sentient. Um, so you have the polyutar, which are like, for lack of a better word, trash people. Um, it's literally conglomerations of garbage, uh, refuse left over from ancient societies that developed a sentient life and a culture. Um, these people have formed regencies under the oceans. Um, they are uh, these kind of amorphous a lot of the time, uh, just humanoid figures. You have the embryophytes, which are basically our answer for tree people, but they're way more horrifying uh, than, than just that. Faces. Yeah, they got big faces. They have no head. Their head is totally hollowed out and it, their face is their whole torso. Um, you have tunnelers, which are um, ancient machinery that has been given its own sentient life. Um, they exist mostly as hive minds in various mainframes, but the player that you would be making would be a disconnected uh, member of one of those mainframes who's now gone out into the world. 
it uh, felt some real heartbreaking lore for them recently. Oh god, yeah. Well, all of these things, man. Like yeah. the uh, the Arache are bug people, which um, are actually our least developed uh, species right now. I think that's kind of the one we have coming up. Um, mm. And so, yeah, I imagine these as like giant cockroaches, basically. Um, you have our builders, which are are actually alien life themselves. Um, they're giant flesh spiders and my least favorite thing in this game. Um, well, actually, between a snail and a camel. Well, actually, second least favorite because humans are in this game and those are obviously yeah. the worst. Um, so what are you thinking? What do you want to do? Well, I want to taunt you with the ones you hate, but... Tempting, I, I know. <laughs> what does chat think? Out of those descriptions that Taylor just gave, what what other species should we make this character? Yeah, no, uh, let us know what you think in the chat here. Let me uh, see if I can zoom in on these a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, of these selections, we have, we have some great options here. Um... Um, Yoda, my dude, know. you can go, man. You don't gotta stay down here with me. Go. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh seriously? Oh hell yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I thought oh, Corey's gone. I thought um, I thought you needed me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, decides, uh, I did want to pitch something to you. I've been uh, because I've been thinking a lot about Arache lately. Um, yeah. And because that they've been around for a really long time, and because as I've been building them lately, they've gotten kind of like big. Um. Obviously, I think like I think they exist on a sexed binary uh, because most insects do, with like a female taking like charge uh, because they tend to be larger. Um, I also think that like okay, I've got a bunch of thoughts about the Arache. Um, that is the least surprising thing you have said this whole stream. I think that they're because they're terrifying, right? And because we've also decided that they've been around forever and people are acclimated to them. Yeah, I think that like. They are no longer, I think they have predatory instincts, but they aren't like meat eaters. I think that they're filter feeders. Ooh, I started okay. to, I like the idea of like leaning in on this technological aspect of things where like people are tech and stuff. Um, and I like the idea of filter feeders in the air. So I think they've got like these like gas masks kind of like grown into them and they like filter ambient things in the air because it was full of like all this like floating life everything's like alive basically so like the idea that like there's like enough food in the air for them to filter out and eat i think is is reasonable huh. and it also means that like when people encountered them it wasn't like holy shit that's a giant spider kill it kill it kill it it was like no we don't even eat me it's chill <laughs> well and actually i i would even go a step further and say one of the things that we have established about the arache is that they are one of the people that were that adapted and like integrated with the rest of life super easily. And maybe the fact that they filter out all of these toxins in the local air is an explanation for that. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like that, that makes a lot of sense that like, Oh, well these people are like super useful. It doesn't make sense for us to be like angry with them. Like let's they actually, eat. let's keep them around. They eat fucking, po oh, they're like, to they, it's toxic. It's, what they eat is toxins. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, no, that's fucking incredible. That's way better. Um, I also think that they are inherently polyamorous. Uh, like, All as, right. as, uh, so like, I think that like, they, like the larger. Um, you heard it here first, folks. Corey just called every polyamorous person a cockroach person. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, don't say why that. do you, Corey? Why do you hate love so much? <laughs> well, uh, I'm bitter, and I want the world to be that way. Fair. I, I think everybody can relate to that. No, no, seriously, go ahead. Um, so, like, I think that they are like, and because like they're no longer uh, predatory in like a hunting way, it's it's no longer based on the idea that like the female would like eat or kill the male after they like have ba like create a brood mother, right? Yeah. Um. So I think that's like, they create these very like, 
nebulous sort of loving groups and like it's a bunch of smaller um like sexed males hanging around like a larger female and they just kind of like create like a little clutch right like right they just hang out make make eggs and like do jobs or whatever they need to do to get by um so like it's like this female red led poly Gamorous group, um, and that's like what their sex. It's the big, big orgy, bug orgy. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you know, of the species that we have so far, two of them participate in reproductive orgies. Do they really? That is also a thing in the Emperfites. Is they have like the big festivals. Actually, bang, and that's like in the air. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of cum in Whatever there. floats your boat, buddy. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Of, a lot of floating cum at these festivals. <laughs> okay, so uh, Noggin said Emberfight. What? <laughs> uh, so we will make an Emberfight. Okay, sounds good. So we're going to go down to our Emberfight section here. Now, the way that these things start, um, each section has kind of this uh, brief... Uh, description of who like the ember fights are uh, actually for those who maybe are watching i'll go ahead and read this really quick um like the polyutar ember fights owe their sudden evolution from existing plant life to the arrival of star shatter energy unlike the polyutar ember fights saw little point in forming advanced societies instead they remain in their home forests rarely straying from their borders they exist in smaller lineages of relatives, engaging in what most other species would call barbarism. This is especially true for the poor souls unlucky enough to enter their neck of the woods. There are, however, some Emberfite who venture beyond the edges of their home forest. Those who aren't always looked upon kindly by strangers, but no one's going to tell that them to tell them that to their face. They don't die of old age. Instead, they grow to be overgrown. It used to take longer to reach overgrowth, but modern generations usually succumb in approximately 40 to 50 years. For a brief period, they can be tamed by the clans, but eventually they all fall to the madness of the wood. Each clan deals with overgrowth in their own way, but they are often cruel and avoided by the subjects if possible. Now, some of, the, some of that's a little dated. We've like, yeah, some of that, some of that needs to be updated. Um, that being said, um, one of the first questions we have here. So character creation exists largely as a survey. You're asked a couple of uh, multiple choice questions and your answer is going to affect both your narrative uh, background as well as your mechanical stats. So the first question, uh, which Emberfight clan does your character hail from? Uh, mm -hmm. We've got, we got a couple of options, um, and a lot of them in this case revolve around the clan's respective um, uh, reaction to this idea of overgrowth, right? Getting crazy and big and powerful as you get older. Uh, the central root brings their elderly together and coalesces them into an unbreakable chain of vines, locking them into place. Um, breakers of the canopy um, accelerate overgrowth using sun and water to give um, a quick noble death. Um, riders of the breach tame and ride the elderly as transport, which is cool. still my favorite. Um, the Northwood Pact resplice branches of the elderly into the young, preventing overgrowth and homogenizing uh, the Northwood oh. tribe's culture. Um, and the Glade folk don't succumb to overgrowth, and no one is really sure why. Ooh, uh, I know my choice. I, uh, I, for my, if I had my druthers, I would do Breakers of the Canopy. Breakers of the Canopy. Okay, cool. So you are going to add a plus uh, to your clockwork. Now that is an approach. It's currently at a D12. So with this, it's now at a D10. So your clockwork is at a D10. Actually, this is... Okay, cool kind of helpful here because I'm going to add just a little plus to each of these. All right. So this uh, is uh, from a, no a noble tribe that accelerates death. Yeah. So metal. like, so yeah, when, when a tree starts coming of age and showing the signs, like I think it's like a whole death ritual, right? Like they take you up to like the top of the canopy. They give you like, I don't know, some kind of like, 
very potent like mineral water or something like that. Um, and like it's direct exposure to the sun that just leads you very, very quickly and swiftly um, into that madness. Now, uh, the next question is what uprooted you from your clan's territory? Obviously you're not with that clan anymore. Um, so why'd you leave is the question. Um, answers include brought one of our wonders to the wider world against the wishes of my clan. They think I'm starting to succumb to overgrowth and I left to avoid a harsh fate. I began to question my clan's method of dealing with the overgrown. Uh, people blame me for a failed negotiation. Um, and I'm hoping that progress in the outside world can help to heal my people. Uh, I chose the last one. Which one are you interested in? Oh, I'm not making one. I'm walking you through. I'm, I'm making you through. Uh, I'm making yeah, I'm, I'm walking you through your character. Okay, cool. Then I am going to... I'm going to choose the first one, then. I brought one of our wonders to the wider world. And then I get to choose one of these, or is it a plus to both? It is a plus to one of them. So this could be appraisal, or it could be skullduggery, depending on what that thing is. Uh, okay, so I'm uh, I'm going to do appraisal. Um, okay. I like the idea of that, like... Um, He's he's like a very thoughtful. Um, I think he's very curious, right? Like, um, yeah, and that's that's what led him to this issue, right? He comes from this very noble clan, and everyone sort of accepts of coming to overgrowth uh, and like this process. And I think that his mind didn't necessarily work like that. It's like, well, why do we do this? What what, what are the reasons that we do it? Like, what is overgrowth? I, and I think that that's what it is. He wanted to know more about something that he found and. Uh, so yeah, appraisal. Um, well, okay, well, wouldn't that be I began to question my clan's method of dealing with the overgrowth? No, I think, because I, I think it's, he's not questioning why they're doing it. He just wants to know the, like, know, like, the purpose behind it. It's not like... that. That is the same thing, Corey. That's just why. The purpose behind okay, I mean, it is why. I just think that he is, he is curious. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's a negative, like, negative connotation. I, mean, I don't think it. Curious. I don't think it has to be, but I mean the I, the idea of this prompt. Here's the deal. I mean uh, the the character creation is meant to be fluid. If you just if you want to go with appraisal, we can definitely go with that. But brought one of your wonders to the wider world would ideally mean that you took something out of the clan and you brought it to the edge of the wood. Like and and that's that's what I think it was. He was curious about something and wasn't getting answers, so he brought it to the wider world to what try did, to get answers. So um, what did you bring? Is the question. Uh, I think it was a. Uh, I think it's like um what do you like a biological text about like an ancient biological text about uh, the process of the canopy. Okay. Um, and it was, it's, it's like a religious doctrine that like, doesn't get, it doesn't get discussed. Right. It's like, it's like everything in the Bible being in Latin. And he was like, well, I want to read it. Uh, okay. So he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sick. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so now your appraisal moves from a one to a two. Okay, um, and now we are on to our general questionnaire. Um, so the first two questions deal specifically with your chosen species. Um, the next set of questions are just having to do with your general background after you leave or before, just depending on, on what the question entails. Uh, the first one is what made you actually choose vault peddling? And, and this is an important question narratively because... Uh, you need to understand, and people watching this need to understand, vault peddlers are not well-liked in EVA. They're seen yeah. as doing a necessary job. The, the stuff that they do is important. But generally, you're, you generally vault peddler crews pull from criminal elements. Um, they're usually just unsavory types. On top of that, going back to your wallet, which has five petty coin in it, most people don't work with raw petty coin because it is dangerous. So on top of just being generally shady people, you're also seen as being dangerous because you're bringing directly dangerous elements into people's cities. Um, all I that in mind, that. 
all that in mind, you chose this profession for a reason, and uh, I think it's important to establish why. Uh, so some examples being just you are good at discerning things of value. Um, you have natural talents with a weapon uh, that lend yourself that lend themselves to a life on the road. Um, determining maps, figures, and clues. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, built for life on the road because it wasn't much rougher than where you came from. Um, you're good at reading people. Um, you're good at talking to people. Uh, you're you're good at crime. Um, uh, roll this up a little bit so I can read these too. Oh yeah, one sec. Sorry. There we go. Built a habit of keeping, uh, getting into in around places where I'm not supposed to go unnoticed or unseen is like walking the street for me. Uh, so I'm stuck between. Oh wait, what is traversal? Um. Suck. There we go. I guess I can <laughs> just use the one e doc. Oh uh, yeah, I've got four screens. I can figure it out. <laughs> Character creation is under. Okay. Uh, so vault peddling is one of the, where you only get to, uh, vault peddling is one of the only kinds of life where you truly get to see the world. That one appeals to me for sure. Okay. Uh, I think repair appeals to me. Skullduggery appeals to me. I don't want to go with appraisal because I don't think it's necessarily things of value that he likes, but I think he's just generally curious. So deduction, I really like. Um, deduction, repair, or traversal. Uh, I'm kind of stuck between. You want to help me out here? Um, yeah. I mean, so here's the thing. Uh, based on what you have told me already... Um... Uh, it sounds like traversal is a really good fit because you are curious about the world. That is something that yeah. you have established about this character. Um, it would also make sense that that level of curiosity would really lend themselves to deduction. Yeah. Um, so I would, here's, here's what I would say. Do you think your character, one of the main things we have for traversal is actually driving the caravan. That's like the biggest yeah. use case for that skill. Um, do you think that your character is is big into vehicles? No, I think he's more interested in going into undiscovered places and find. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's deduction. I think it's deduction then. Yeah, like that that would have a lot more use case. I think there. Okay, so your deduction now moves from a two to a one, or sorry, sorry, a one to a two. Um. And we're on to the next one. So the next one has to do with divinity and the gods. Um, Eba is a place that has quite a few gods. Um, you've got um, she who waits in the trenches. You've got, um, you got Dooner Brining, who's kind of a hero, hero to the vault peddler community. Um, and here's the thing. This is the kind of world where, Atheism is really more of maybe questioning where the gods come from or whether they're actually divine. It's not really a conversation about are there gods? Because because yeah. these gods actually are physical. They are on this world. Um, so what's your attitude? What's you? What does your character think of the gods? Anything uh, that creates brand uh, that creates brand structures in this world. Um, presence being everywhere all at once um i, I don't know if our skullduggery the ability to stop wrongdoing wherever it occurs is mm. an interesting take on skullduggery there yeah maybe that's what you think a god is oh okay okay that would make more sense then uh okay uh anything so what does this guy think about the gods yeah uh I, if I'm being honest with you, uh, I mean, appraisal or deduction, I think, makes the most sense. The ability to change whatever you want in your world. I don't know if he wants to change things. He likes to know things. Knowing I, things is more this guy's strength for sure. Deduction, yeah. deduction sounds like a better fit. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, 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 yeah, I think it's deduction, omniscience. Okay, so deduction now moves from a two to a three. You have a, you got a very clever boy that you're that you're building. 
Um, I think he's just very, I think he's very curious, and I think like he fucks shit up because of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so now uh, we get to have kind of a fun question. What's your biggest okay. haul? So vault peddlers go into dangerous places, um, and with that comes some level of treasure hunting, right? Yeah. Um, most of the time that's pooled together, um, you know, for the purpose of fulfilling a contract or whatever, but occasionally uh, an individual vault peddler might get to take something home with them personally. Uh, you get to choose one of these items off of the list um, and add it, and I'd like to know where it came from. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, while you're while you're reading through, I'll just read some of these. So examples: um, all of these items give you know special abilities. Scrying bones being one of my favorites. Uh, you occasionally get a cryptic glimpse of the future. At the beginning of a contract, make an obfuscation impression best roll. And what that means is that only ones and twos count on a best roll. Um, if successful, the GM gives you an important piece of information about the coming contract related to your chosen skill in the form of a vision. Um, and so all of these uh, do something to that effect. A lot of them, the, them just provide like additional dice or maybe they improve your die type on certain kinds of roles. In other cases, they, they actually do very unique things like the scrying bones. Um, but yeah, do you have anything that you think fits? Uh, I think that the inconspicuous cloak makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So during the Hidden War, citizens of Orad had to learn how to hide very well to escape the terror of the Ember Fights. The cloaks they developed have been a part of honing the skill ever since. When attempting to disappear into a crowd, re-roll obfuscation. Um, so basically, this just gives you advantage when you're trying to blend in. Um, we should consider cha uh, changing this to uh, adding a die, though. Yeah. I don't know. Like, just in general, should we be, like, moving our our, our items, like, beginning items to, like... I guess no, because these are supposed to be more unique, right? Yeah, I mean, that was the idea. Okay, then yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Um, okay, uh, and... Uh, 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 oh, you want to know where I got it, huh? Yeah, yeah, I want to know what the story is behind you getting this thing. Yeah, my biggest haul is 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 why I got. Uh, I think that like after he returned to his encampment, he was kind of chased off for and, and like burnt away from the tribe. I think he is he's burnt out of the tribe um, for what he did. Yeah. Which like no, no skin off his back, just brand whatever. <laughs> um, but like it's a hard world out there, and that's how I think he fell into uh, vault peddling. And he took up with this dude named Maddock. Um, and Maddock uh, was, like, a family long into, like, the Oradian history and then, like, ended up getting chased out by the church, whatever. Uh, but, like, they were both kind of outsiders and he took him under his wing and, like, showed him things. And then, like, Maddock thought it was very funny that, like, he and Ember Fight was wearing this, like, uh, cloak like from the uh from the ember fight war with orad he just like got a kick out of it so like Maddock ended up passing and like he kept the cloak and that's that's his biggest haul it's an Hell emotional yeah. one yeah. very very emotional one uh okay yeah i love that like i'm a bit sad that i'm not gming for this because that note about <laughs> Maddock would be very helpful um Okay, cool. So uh, what is your relationship with your current community? So this is not your relationship with the Ember Fights, which you've pretty yeah. accurately gone into. Um, but how do your fellow vault peddlers generally feel about you? This this kind of dictates your general persona. Like how per how personable is, um, uh, is your character? Um... Yeah, I think it's a. Um, I'm gonna need them to be. I've got a lot of work to get to the. I think it's holistics, honestly. Holistics, smart home in the caravan. Yeah, I mean, based off what you said before, that makes a ton yeah. of sense. Okay, cool. So your holistics now moves from a D12 to a D10. Um, 
And now we get to talk about your nemesis. And this is a very fun, like, GM-facing question. Yeah, um, this is a good one. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned before, most people don't like vault peddlers. Um, and as a result, you're going to get friction from just about everybody that you meet, unless they are also vault peddlers or they regularly deal with vault peddlers. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, you individually, every character that starts in vault peddlers starts with a nemesis. Um, and I want to know who that is for you. Uh, I, I, I think it's a criminal or a criminal cartel. Um, okay. I, I, I like the idea of that, like, this guy kind of blundering into halls and shit, like, took the wrong thing from the wrong people. Like, assuming, well, we're, we're all out in the wild, and I'm seeing it right here. It's so the law of the I open am... road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, it worked out for him and ended up being a hall for him in his community. It is huge, but these dudes have, like, a fucking hair up their ass about him now like I, I think it was like either um a very important item to i i i think it's uh, a cartel in Arad. i like the idea of it being like related to like um uh the the, the, the like the serpent's back or something like that uh, okay yeah uh, yeah um the black scale it's called the black scale love that. uh and, and yeah, they pull in relics for uh, for the church, like under the radar. Yeah. Um, and like keep the city of vice rolling. All right. Hell yeah. What are the chances you're ever going to play with this character, do you think? <laughs> uh, I, I love him so much. I, I'm already constructing like backstories and twists for this <laughs> man. And I need to know whether I can tell you what they are or not. <laughs> uh, the black scale. That's pretty good. Um, okay. Um, and that is an entry to my skullduggery. It is. Yeah, your skullduggery moves from a one to a two. Um, all right. And what's the most personally significant setback your caravan has experienced? Okay. The idea... And the idea here is that life in the caravan, it is a rough life. Um, it is filled with hardships. It's very exciting and it's very, um, I don't know, some people I think would romanticize it, but you know, the reality of it is very, very harsh. You're living day to day. You're living often on scraps. Um, and as a result, most caravans have horror stories where, you know, they had to go for, you know, so long without rations or they had to walk, you know, all the way to Ishtas in order to, you know, recharge a power converter or whatever it is. Um, what is the most significant um, setback that your caravan has experienced? Yeah, um, I think it's either the loss of Matic or the item that he picked up from the Black Scale. Um, okay. I think they're both interesting. Um the loss of Matic feels very direct, uh, and I like, I don't know, maybe th this object might be interesting, too. Like, um, like it's a, like a ticking box, like a music box or something like that. Um, mm. they, they don't, like, it, it just keeps ticking, and what's inside is, like, written about in the church, uh, or something like that. Um, I came into possession of powerful treasure that we can't unlock. I really like that a lot. Um, and I don't like the idea of him having this revenge story with Matic. I think Matic passed and it was sad, but yeah. like the community kept going on, right? And like now he's just in ingratiated himself to this community. He is a, like he is a part of that now. I don't yeah. think that it's like they are seeking revenge. I think it's that they have this item now and it's just this ticking box. Kind of like uh, the 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 lament configuration in um, Hellraiser. It's yeah, just okay. like the puzzle box, but like it like clicks and rotates, but it doesn't like open. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to add one more to your deduction. If that's the case, what is that? A three now? Uh, it's actually a four. It's a four. Damn. Smart boy. <laughs> All right, cool. And here's the thing, guys. With that, that's actually the end of 
character creation. Now, you do have the option to take your five petty coin and buy yourself some gear. Um, otherwise, you actually start out with basic uh, mundane armor and weapons uh, right off the bat. Um, yeah. So really quick before we move on, what do I mean by that? Let me get this pulled up here. So um, equipment is divided between mundane and advanced. Um, this is equipment which operates, uh, mundane equipment is, operates without the influence of petty coin. These items are freely available. So literally if you say like, hey, I want, you know, a machine gun. Well, cool. You actually can have that machine gun. That's not a big deal. Um, if it's just a mundane weapon, it doesn't add anything to your uh, damage. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any existing stats and it doesn't add to your rolls. Um, but that's just how you attack. And that's cool. Yeah. You have it. Um, and you can do this with any weapon, um, which is just a cool thing about this, right? Obviously, it, there's a lot of GM uh, fiat that's going to have to go into it here. If you do take a machine gun, then the way that you justify that narratively is like, well, you're very, not very good at shooting it. Right. Or it's a shitty machine gun. Right. Or it's a shitty machine gun. <laughs> um, now, if you want to spend some of your five petty coin, um, you can uh, buy yourself some advanced equipment. And this is stuff that requires the use of petty coin for each use or to activate a special ability. Uh, so um, this uh, depends on you know, how you want to do this. Um, uh, advanced, advanced equipment, um, is imbued with magic and the way that we delineate different kinds and categories of items or armor or weapons is light, medium, or heavy imbuement. Light will add a plus one to your hit. Medium will add a plus two to your hit, or you can add a special tag to it, uh, meaning it d performs a certain additional function. Uh, and a heavy is a plus three to hit and a tag, but of course it's going to cost you significantly more to, to get. Yeah. Um, do you want to add any of these to your, um, uh, to your sheet? Um, boy, uh, I didn't think about that section. It's funny because I like always go through, uh, what's that? Where, where is this under, uh, in this, uh, this is, this is under equipment. Um, it is in the four archivist section or is it its yeah. own section? I think it is actually, I need to change that. And actually I should move a copy of this up to the front, um, into the character creation section. Now that I'm looking at it. Uh, bolt that I'm stealing resistant uh, auto fire. I didn't fire rapidly, causing double damage, but requiring run around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Um, medium is plus two to hit or a tag. Uh, um, I like the idea. But, yeah, I think I'm going to take a... Because I'm not, like, a particularly burly uh, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend my coin. Um, okay, cool. I'm going to get a heavy imbued... Um, uh, a heavy imbued item. Okay. Uh, I would like to get a... Um, I think I'm going to call it, like, a, 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 bolt, a bolt pistol. Um, okay. Love that. And... It, it fires like I'm going like super Fallout here. It fires like fucking rail spikes, basically. Um, All right, hell yeah. But I'm gonna do heavy on this, so I think that's four. Is it gonna cost four? It costs four to buy, and if you do need to refill it, it's an additional three. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the um, so it's a plus three to hit, which is gonna be great for me because yeah. my character stock will not be rolling particularly good. So having those extra three die to roll on attack is going to be super helpful for me. Yes, correct. Um, uh, so that's a plus three uh, to hit. 
Um, and it, I think it makes sense that he would choose a weapon that he would stay further away from people, which will lower the amount of, uh, yeah, uh, which will raise the amount of successes any, whatever. But, uh, I'm also going to pick the, uh, tag. Okay. Auto fire. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also am realizing looking at these tags, you're going to need, um, you're going to need a range tag regardless, right? because um, we've determined that like you can have a sword and you can just throw the sword and we will use the ranged uh, st like our our the what we came up with for using a ranged weapon will occur with a sword as well. Wait, I'm just fucking fucking my sword. Wait, what did we um what did we come up uh, with for that? I gotta relook at it. We wrote it down. I don't know where we wrote it down. We did write it down though. Um, yeah, I'm not. Not actually. Yep. It's got to be. It's got to be in combat somewhere, right? Oh yeah, that's well. I you'd hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh... <laughs> oh, what am I doing? I can just control F this thing. Hang on. Um. Okay. So that's caravan resources. We talked about this. This is one of the things we did off screen, actually, which is good because that means we can't go back and watch a video about it. Yeah. Um, Corey, it's not written here. Maybe we put it in Vault Peddler's lore dump. Mm. God damn it, Taylor! Why do we do this? Because. <laughs> were dumb. I mean, here I maybe I'm not remembering this, but it definitely seems like yeah, maybe it's on one of your yellow pads of paper. <laughs> leave, me, leave me alone. Um, no, I, I, I want to say no. I want to say the range tags are how we resolved this, right? No, they, they, it's the it's the opposite. We decided we did not need a range tag because any weapon could be ranged. It just increases. Um, it does it at it it adds a degree of difficulty in that like if i am up against somebody who is firing like point blank it is more difficult for like somebody's attacking me so it's more yeah. difficult fuck so it, just, it, 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 it it adds to the necessary number of successes exactly that's that's what it was so like, and is that just and is that just narrative or do we have it determined by how much it needs to be to add that success? No, we had like a, we had a near far medium and far. Uh, so that like, if you're throwing something far, it's the hardest. It was like range bands. I don't believe we Okay. Did. Well I have, I mean the range tags do that. Like, Oh, like okay, what, short, what? short range, short range is zero to one hexes. Uh, medium is two to eight. And then long range is beyond eight. So each each one of those adds a degree of difficulty to what you're trying to do. So in okay. that case, you don't have to like you can have a sword and say I'm a huck it far, and you can. It's just you know it's that much more difficult to do. That way we didn't have to split up ranged weapons and melee weapons. We could just say all weapons are ranged because I could just fucking beat you with my fucking gun. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to put a note on here. So short adds one degree, uh, medium adds two, and long adds three. We probably should use the same text, uh, probably not degree of difficulty. That was like our old text. What do we use now? Um, uh, you need successes? Three, three additional successes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, one second. So require... So three necessary successes. Oh, there's also a Blades in the Dark thing I think we should fucking steal and kind of addresses a, an argument we had on stream the other day. Okay, uh, one sec, let me get this real quick. Okay, cool. Um, two and then one, okay. So adds one required success to associated roles, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, 
What were you talking about? Uh, and additionally, we should probably include. Um, we'll we'll talk about this later, actually, because we had something. I'm sure we have it written somewhere. I just don't know where we put it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, okay, what's next? I have. Oh, and I want I want to do. I want to buy uh, a plus one armor. Yeah, and that'll be your last petty coin. That works. Um. And I think I just want to do uh, inconspicuous. Can I? Can I bump up my inconspicuous cloak? Um, I think that makes sense. Like finding, okay. uh, like making it a reinforcement thing. All that that's yeah. doing is it's just making it so that you have a plus one to your defense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, plus one reinforced. Yeah, inconspicuous cloak reinforced. Um, I, I think it's very much that he like found he found um, like armored plating and sewed it in. Yeah. Well, I don't even think it needs to be sewed in. I mean, we established that that is actually like a war garment. Like it would make yeah. sense that there would be armored versions of it. Um. So yeah, that works. So yeah, and like here's the thing about I'll say this much as somebody who makes a lot of characters, this is satisfying. Um, Good. Because. Like, I'm able to circumvent the things that I'm weak at. And not all the things that I'm weak at, but some of, like, I'm not a beefy, burly dude, but I'm able to get items. But I items do have a take. giant rail gun. <laughs> it's like a pistol, but it's like, uh, like, <laughs> but it's got like a fucking uh, a Van Helsing rotating thing on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thousand percent. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I'm able to get like that bolt pistol and the cloak, which like make me a little bit more burly in combat. But I can still focus on the things that matter to me, which is like yeah, discovery. Yeah, and on a GM perspective, um, I like this also because even though you have these great things, I don't feel a, I don't feel at all like you're overpowered. Um, and obviously, I won't know that till we do start play testing. But it doesn't feel like it on character creation. Um, but also B, you had to use all of your money to get that shit. And yeah. now, and now I have that, that I can use against you. You don't have yeah. money. Well, you can, you can feed yourself, but you can't feed like the caravan, which like is uh, a yeah, thing I, that, that you have to do. Yeah. Um, so that's like, I that's, and I have to negotiate for like payment, some payment up front kind of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Okay, so now what we're going to do, uh, actually, uh, this is maybe a good place to just really quickly say hi. If you're just tuning in, um, we are, t yeah, hi, G goodbye. Um, <laughs> we're TGS Games. Uh, we do a weekly stream where we do uh, live game dev stuff, um, creating our new TTRPG game, Vault Peddlers. Um we are really on the tail end right now of some kind of revamps following an earlier play test that we did. Um, mm. We were gearing up for a play test that we were going to be doing in the next few weeks, but unfortunately PAX Unplugged is upon us. So we're kind of trying to nail down a lot of the finer points on this thing before we have to take that there. Um, right now uh, I'm walking Corey through uh, character creation on our game. You can see at the top of the screen um, is kind of the general layout of our character sheet. Um, and then at the bottom, um, I'm walking him through the Google Doc um, for, the, uh, uh, for the character creation itself. We're actually all the way through uh, character creation. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to have you... you. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have time and then we could do a caravan creation together. Also, this is a joke for everyone in New Hampshire. I want you to scroll down to what this accomplishes, because apparently that's where I put my character. And look at his names. His name. One sec. Ba, 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 ba. Meadow Brooks. Yeah, so that's like a venue in, in New Hampshire. In oh, okay. <laughs> Feels like very ember fight. So, like. Congratul <laughs> congratulations! Hi, I'm out. Um, okay, cool. I'm gonna... Was that a chips bigly? So... <laughs> uh, Actually, I don't know. Well, it, it landed with noggin, dude. At the very least. Um... Nice. <laughs> the brook him. Uh, oh, dude, for sure. I used to work there. It sucked, but I was just helping somebody out. 
I'm just getting Actually, I think, it, I think his name's just Brooks. I really like that. Okay, so test character two. Um... Well, I get to write, walk you through it. Uh, yeah, you are going to need to walk me through it because I can't go back and forth on this thing over and over again. Um... um... So the first thing you're going to want to do, Taylor, yep. is we are going to uh, add your base stats. You get a d12 in all your approaches. Okay, cool, cool. And a one in each of your skills. And your beginner wallet hanging at your new vault peddler's waist, bristling with static electricity, has five brand new shiny living petty coin in them. What was that second word? <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> I said shiny. <laughs> uh, and once you have those written, let me know. Okay. One sec. Got this. Dun, dun, dun. The, I just, yeah, I like the name Brooke. Brooke is good. Brooks. I don't want to play this character now. It's a good character. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, um, I am thinking, uh, yeah, I am, I am all good on the, uh, petty coin skills and approaches. What's next? Uh, next you are going to choose your species. Okay. Uh, yeah. we have the public tar, we have the ember fights, tunnelers, error, shea, builders, and humans. Hmm. Um, okay, so I am going to go with... I'm going to go with a bug man. Let's do an Arashe. Arashe, cool. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to read the Arashe for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the arrival of Star Shatter Energy dramatically transformed Eba. For the insect creatures living on this planet, this resulted in a drastic growth in size and intellectual cap capability. Unlike every other new native species, however, the Arashe didn't form any societies. Instead, they quickly melded with the existing societies around them. It is not uncommon to see them at any settlement or city regardless of size, but their metal coating often makes them prime candidates for jobs requiring a tough skin. As a note, I think that, like, even though you don't see them, like, they, they haven't formed, like, their independent cultures, I think that you'll see, like, groups of, like, you know, like... like oh, sure. Yeah, Arashe, like, streets or whatever, where it's like, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the family live down there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um... Uh, and they all... They, they love to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they, they love polyamorous relationship, those cockroaches. Um, yeah, I also have to decide which of the three uh, sex genders my character is. Oh, yeah. I think he's a reed. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you know, your first question. Um, as an error the char character questions we're going to start on is where in Eba does your character hail? Uh, we have a frontier village in the wastes of Eba. We have underground, where Arashe communities have come into contact with underground tunneler mainframes. We have Orod, a city on the water where Arashe have hunted Metal Serpent for hundreds of years. We have the Iron Courts of Vigil. Uh, also, for Orod, we should <laughs> a city of sin on the water yeah. where Arashe. <laughs> uh, we've recently turned Orod, which was like this very churchy place, into also Las Vegas, but it's, still churchy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's uh, incredible. It's uh, Eba Las Vegas. <laughs> Who runs the casinos? The church does, my son. <laughs> Would you like to take a bet on the race? Uh, um, so we have Holistics, the Iron Courts of Vigil, where Arashe have served under the king for centuries, and Obfuscation, the Desert Eye, Ishtos, where Arashe have been subjugated by the powers that be for agricultural development. Ugh. Um, yeah, <sighs> Ishtos makes me feel just so fucking dirty. Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm actually, I was gonna go with Orid because I think it makes sense that that's, like, how we met, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I actually kind of like the idea that he is a transplant from Vigil, 
because he just couldn't cut it there. Like he, he he's not about that work life. Um, Boy, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, this. Yeah, so this boy, this boy is not for that, um, and he is going to. Uh, what the hell? Um, yeah, he is going to be from Vigil. That's holistics. Uh, that is holistics. Yes. Okay. Cool. So that is now a D10. Okay. Uh, your next question and your last question for the error of Shay is: What was your first experience outside that community? Uh, we have. I worked at a less than reputable auction for ill-gotten goods. Uh, we were set upon by violent ravagers while traveling outside the confines. I came upon records of antiquity while scavenging for resources. I was beset upon by a roving AI or ancillary danger. Uh, uh, our carriage broke down between communities and we had to brave the harsh environment alone. I was set upon by an AI, I think is a uh. very interesting idea. Um, I think so here's the I think that this is a very selfish character but I think that by even standards he's going to be very religious um <laughs> and I and I think like AI is going to be the answer to that. I think like a swarm of like nanobots in the shape of like a giant face like basically just like took everything that he had while he was like out on the road. Hell yeah. Uh what is that? Uh, so that is your choice of impression or parlay. Ooh. You were basically beset upon by the baby face at the end of the Matrix. Yeah, exactly. Like in the <laughs> ma- like in the Matrix, Drew. Exactly. Yeah. Noggin dude, noggin dude, nailed it. Um, oh shit! Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> you you two both you two page. both said it to me at exactly the same time. Um, Okay, so impression or parlay. Those are like my two most spammed skills whenever I make characters. Um, I'm going to go with parlay because I think that um, I was set upon by this AI and I convinced them that I was not worth killing, Um, that I was unimportant enough that like they had what they wanted and to just go. One of my favorite character traits is cowardice. I <laughs> love it. So good. Always yeah. a great, always a great trait. <laughs> Getting fucking, uh, what was his name? Um, in uh, uh, Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> um, Harvey Joyce. Harvey Joyce. I knew it was Harvey. Um, favorite. Yeah. Harvey oh, Joyce so and good. Here. The most incredible team of all <laughs> the worst, the worst human beings you'll ever know, teaming up for academic integrity. <laughs> you fucking bash that thing, you motherfucker! How how dare you <laughs> compromise the integrity of this college? <laughs> Nobody knows what we're talking about, but it was a very funny scene that we did. Um. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. So now we're going to move to general questions. Yeah. Uh, so question number one, uh, what made you choose vault peddling? Um, good at discerning things of value, natural talents with a weapon, determining maps, figures, and clues, uh, built for life on the road because it's not much rougher. Where, uh, it's, uh, you know, it uh, wasn't that much rougher than where you came from anyways. A uh, bit of a habit of keeping an eye on people and environments around you. Uh, silver tongue. Getting in around places where you're not supposed to go unnoticed or unseen. Natural skill with tech and machinery. Uh, or vault pedaling is one of the kinds of life where you get to truly see the world. So it's either traversal or appraisal. Um, and I think... Can you read me appraisal one more time? Uh, appraisal is I found myself good at discerning things of value. Vault pedaling gave me an opportunity to do that. Yeah, I think it's appraisal, actually. Um, okay. I definitely think that, um, like, of the things that he lost, several of them were things that he took from Vigil uh, okay. that that were things of value. Um, and so I think that as soon as he got to Orad, I think that he actually hooked up with criminal cartels specifically because he had a good eye for that kind of thing. And, like, maybe he actually got, like, associated with the black scale that way is kind, oh, cool. of, where, is kind yeah. of where my brain yeah. is going with it. Okay, dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, that's rad. Uh, this is fun. <laughs> um, uh, what is divinity? Uh, yeah, so the next question is divinity, which should be an interesting one for you. Yeah. Uh, what does divinity mean for your character? Oh, by the way, oh yeah, that was a praise. You already got that. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, divinity, the ability to change whatever you want in your world, the ability to force your will on your opponents, mm. omniscience, knowing everything, anything immortal is a god, anything commanding a church of followers, the ability to speak to other planes of existence, the ability to stop wrongdoing wherever it occurs, anything that creates brand structures in this world. <laughs> brand structures? Like marketing? <laughs> That's what I, it says brand strike. It's supposed to be grand. Grand. It's, it's like got to be grand. I think it's got to be grand. <laughs> Can we actually keep it brand? <laughs> I kind of... For our hyper capitalist del hellscape? Uh, I, I don't know how it relates to repair, but uh, grand makes more sense with repair. Yeah, grand probably fits. <laughs> I do like better. that, though. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> uh, our oh my god! Uh, running a running a vault pedaling crew that focused solely on like physical SEO and brand <laughs> propagation for whoever you're working for. It's all it's all about visibility, you know. <laughs> Fucking incredible. Um, okay. Uh, anything that creates grand structures in the world, omnipresence, uh, being everywhere all at once. Um, okay, so I think actually I'm gonna go with appraisal. Uh, let me. I need to look at these really quick. Um, so change whatever you want in your world. See, I think that that the appraisal answer really speaks to the selfishness of the character. Just being able to change whatever you want is kind of like, yeah, obviously that's like the height of what a god means to this person. Um,. Church of followers, other planes of existence. Yeah. I mean, also, like, you like talking your way out of the, like, the, the, yeah. Right? Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, I think that that works. I mean, I, the ability to speak to other, maybe not other planes of existence, but like speaking, I don't know. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think that that tracks for you, right? Like, yeah, I feel like that's, I feel like that's it. I think it's going to be appraisal again. Which is, uh, for me, very weird. I normally am very big about, like, spreading my skills out as much as possible. So this is going to be a big departure for me as far as uh, characters. You don't want to end up like Nick on the playtest. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, uh, okay, okay, what's next? Next question is your biggest haul. Uh, I'm going to let you okay. look over these. Yeah, yeah, I need to. Um, so, like... One of the things on here is the Mask of the Nocturne. The Nocturne are like kind of... Actually, I'm going to take this time to fucking say thank you for joining us. Uh, if you are just joining us, we're making characters for our game, Vault Peddlers. Um, we've been working on this game for about two years. And I don't know. Uh, right now we get to like do it with the community and show you like how to make characters with it. And it's very fun. Tonight's been a very fun stream. Um... If you want, like, more low-key streams, we're going to be doing a lot of those for the next two months while we, like, actually put documents together on stream and show you how how the sausage is made. So if you, like, want to be involved in playtests in the future, let us know. Um, if you want to play test the game, let us know in two months. We'll have everything downloadable on the website, which is tgsgames.com. Go check it out. Um, hey. 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 Uh, type those to be. It's brand structure. I really want to take my sales experience and make a little piece of shit character. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like this is the game for it, Drew. Uh, for it, Noggin. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I went ahead with the rules of etiquette. Um, Ooh. Which is, uh, it also involves a character I made uh, for this game. Hester Malstron was completely unimpressed with the end of the world, believing it was oh. no reason to turn into animals. Her book, The Rules of Etiquette, is filled with advice on what makes the world go round and how to grease the wheel. When greasing these wheels, add one die to your dice pool. Um, so oh, I, I think that this speaks to like his ability to like be a smooth talker. Um, like a lot of that is like taking stuff he picked up from this book and then totally misusing it, 
Um, but like taking the insights and just turning them into something very like not what the book intended. We should probably add something action because when greasing that we like when do you roll that? Um Oh, that's a good question. Um so when hmm. when making a parlay roll? I guess that's it. I think we yeah, that, that's probably it. Yeah, so when parlay roll to grease these wheels. Soft soiled boots. Soft soiled boots. I, I keep reading that as soft soiled boots, and it's very gross. Somebody peed on them a lot. They're very soft. Took a shit in my boots. Again. What, you guys don't shit in your boots? It makes you quieter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the grossest thief in the world. Guys, it's practical. <laughs> um oh, Okay. Man, these are gonna be fucking gnarliest characters. I'm very excited for this. Um uh, let's move on from your rules of etiquette, which I fucking love, by the way. It's one of my favorite uh items in that list. Yeah. Definitely uh, love that book. So what is your relationship with your current community? Uh You've got a lot of work to do to get the caravan, the people in it, uh, into what <laughs> no. I need them to be. Strictly professional. Uh, I'd love to know my other teammates better, but they seem afraid of me. I feel more at home in the caravan than I did in my own home territory. Uh, I struggle to make meaningful connections and tend to keep folks at arm's length. Um. Okay, hang on one second, because I think two of those are... Two of those are potentially speaking to me. Um... Relationship with the community. Oh, clockwork is strictly professional. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's not adaptation because I am not doing work. It's not ferocity because I'm not frightening. Um, I, I will say this much. Like, adaptation, uh, <laughs> that work could be making the other members of the other caravan. people, other, making other people yeah. do the work for me. <laughs> yeah. It's all a matter of how you frame it, right? Yeah, like, right. I need you guys to do this because I don't want to. Ugh, today drained me. <laughs> just, well, and I feel just, like Brooks would be a very easy person for you to manipulate. <laughs> just just sitting on a lawn chair with a Mai Tai, just like, ugh, today drained me. Um, uh, let me see here. So, um, I think... Okay, so it's not obfuscation because I actually think that like the meaningful connections thing, I I a lot of the times will play characters that keep people at arm's length and I actually don't think I want this person to be that. I think he's yeah. a coward and he's very upfront about it. Um so adaptation. I It's it's going to be adaptation uh or it's holistics. Like Yeah. Uh, you know what? I kind of like, like I kind of like your answer for adaptation though. I think I am gonna go with that. It's just Right, like cause he Yeah. It's just very good. Uh, it's it, it's not about him doing the work, it's about you doing the work for him. It's about the work getting done. And why are you <laughs> oh and God. why are you so uh, concerned with who does the work? Just pick up the shovel and go. It just needs to be done, which is like very vigil backing to what he's we're, saying. Right? We're like a big family here. <laughs> now go <laughs> dig. What's Brooks doing? Digging a hole. I Why? don't know. He's. I got him too. <laughs> Why is he digging that hole? I don't know. He wanted to. Um, <laughs> uh, Noggin, dude. To answer to answer your question. Um, so kind of as per like the way we just did the last section, you can answer the questions really however you like. Um, these are more prompts and you kind of pick which one fits best and sort of just take it however it goes. Um, yeah, and, and as far as character growth, yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't think it like change. Like we don't have like a bond system in place really. Yeah, um, no. Not that I dislike the, I actually like those systems quite a bit. I think they're very clever ways to mechanize like um, owing people shit. <laughs> um, yeah, but, fair. Uh, no, 
like you, you it, 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 might, it might be something we want to consider but i think for the time being it's just like you have room to grow this is just like where you start as a company as a company okay so <laughs> who's your nemesis is the next one so uh we have someone wealthy someone violent someone smart Someone who just won't die, someone charismatic, a smooth talker, a criminal or a criminal cartel, a mad scientist, or someone who wanders. God, I love that one. Mmm. No problem, Noggin. Uh, obviously, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pose them. We yeah, this is, to answer. this is a big part of the reason why we're doing this, is so that we can find things, find holes in, in what we're doing. <laughs> So, I'm trying to think what the connection is here. Um, Here's hmm. a question for you. Yeah. Did you, did you join, because you, you joined the, like, I, I think I was a part of Maddox's crew and then Maddox died. Right. Uh, and then I, I took up the torch um, with, you know, uh, whatever truck or whatever he had. So you probably did you join after or before Matic died? I think definitely after. I, I think that okay. I, I think that I was a newer arrival. Um and I I think that I am gonna go with that I had been working with the um with the black scale. Um okay. but I don't think they're my nemesis anymore. Um I think on what for whatever reason, I think that we parted ways on relatively good terms which i think is actually kind of a source of tension with you and me um because it's, it's one of those things where it's like hey you know your friend is shitty right and he's like yeah i know but like he's my friend though like could you not be a dick about this please <laughs> like um so i don't think it's i don't think it's the criminal cartel um i think Oh, whoa. Hello? Seriously? Um, okay, I don't know what's going on here, y'all. Wow, everything is frozen. My god. <laughs> 